G'day guys and girls, I hope you enjoyed my last video and I'll be bringing you every single Friday from now on a round where I have a perfect game or close to a perfect game where I have large kill streaks and just rounds where I'm absolutely tearing up the enemy. This way I'll be able to get everything off my hard drive. It won't be completely in time before Battlefield 2042 releases, but this is at least a way for me to get away from all my footage from Battlefield 5, Battlefield 4, and then also at the same time providing you content from the title that's coming out. So every Friday will now be known as Only Farms Friday, where I'll provide you just rounds where, as the title describes, farming the enemy. Also, just for a note, from now on, I'm going to be putting chapters in my video. So if you want to skip to a particular part where I talk about a particular topic, just look on below in the bar. So shall we begin with today's video? This is from Battlefield 5 on the map Arras. This is the conquest layout version of this map. And we'll be playing on the German side, picking the Panzer IV with the complete anti-tank loader. If I remember, it is completely the left hand side of the tech tree. So cover the obvious part of this loadout, you have the AP shell which does more damage to vehicles and if I remember having a little bit of a higher velocity as well but at the cost have less damage against infantry splash wise. But this isn't really much of an issue given that splash damage of the long barrel version turret of this tank is actually quite generous so you don't have to worry about that whatsoever although the stubby version is very generous with the splash damage being, if I recall, identical to the Tiger tanks, you won't have to really worry about this. What it makes up for in splash damage is being extremely accurate, so wherever you are aiming and pointing at, the shell's going to generally drive itself in a straight line towards wherever you shoot. This is very useful when you're having to shoot down aircraft, which on this map you have two planes to worry about, depending on if it's a light plane such as a fighter or you're having to deal with bombers. It's not going to be too much of an issue when you have the AP shell and the standard shell round of the tank. Although, do remember if you're versing quite skilled pilots, it's going to be extremely difficult and hard to find yourself to get in a position to shoot up into the sky to kill it, but at least this way you actually have a very decent chance of killing them. Also, one of the things that you have advantage with this loadout is the smoke dispenser. So that if you get into a situation where you need to make yourself a little bit harder to see or make a hasty retreat, you can just simply pop that and you won't have to worry about anything as well. Do take note of how uh, generous the damage is there with the AP shells against um, enemy tanks, especially against heavy tanks. This gives you a solid fighting chance against heavy vehicles in this game. Although the call-in tank has a lot of HP to compared to the heavier tanks, you still will need to get it around the side or completely behind them. Also, you want to try and avoid the disable repair ability because honestly there is no reason to need to use it. Having that extra 30 HP for when you need to kind of clutch a play is just invaluable. You should be always clicking that over anything in all your loadouts. Now, you could probably get away with also running the canister shell on this, but it depends on how you like to position yourself. Are you squatting with teammates or are you wanting to focus their vehicles more? Because the canister shells are very effective at um, dealing with infantry that know how to peek vehicles properly. It kind of gives you that like instant one tap on them and able to fight off people that are just a bit more skillful when it comes to actually taking out enemy tanks. But if you're finding you're not really having that problem anyway, you can just switch to the AP shell and you become way more effective at dealing enemy armor, especially all variants and types of the enemy armor that can be deployed on the map. And I think that will cover pretty much all that needs to be covered for the reason why I've chosen this loadout for this map. You can use other variations and loadouts, but this is the one I would probably run the most of the time on this map. Now let's get to the topic of positioning on this map as well as rotations. So most of the time you'll be playing the A flag, the B flag, the C flag and the F flag and generally rotating around and lurking around E or sometimes actually getting on the flag. 
but you are generally at very few times will end up on the D flag. And if you've already watched some of my videos, you probably already know what I'm going to say. If for anyone that's new watching, the reason why you won't be going to the D flag is it's extremely close to the unclap. And that is just a recipe for one, you getting flanked and shot from behind. Two, vehicles are going to be coming constantly out of the spawn, so you become much more easily overwhelmed at the same time. And three, you will not have any real support from AAs or any other assistance to take out aircraft because at the end of the day the counter to most tanks is generally a good pilot so let's go to the footage and use this as a good example right here right now you can see I've positioned myself between two flags the friendly flag behind me so I've now I've got my back I can see that on the HUD I've got some friendlies behind me as well as well as the enemy flag in front of me so that I do take note that that's where the enemy is going to be coming from you can see I've taken note really quickly seeing that there was a vehicle coming behind me I take a second to see what exactly it is and I can see it's only a transport vehicle so I target prioritize the guards in front of me which is probably more going to be the bigger threat if you have people spawning off that truck, then it's going to be obviously a different problem that you have to deal with and deal with that. But at that point in time, I chose my targets of what I need to deal with first. I've pulled myself back because I can feel and sense that not only that they've got A, but they've got E. So there's a possible chance I'm not going to be shot from the front, but from my side as well. Also, I've only just noticed in this video footage as well, I'm actually out of ammo. So. If you haven't taken note on this, the only real ammo depots on this flag are behind me that you can see right now that I'm backing up to slightly, as well as the ammo station in front of me near F flag. You can see the one behind me is greyed out, which means that I can't get any supplies off it. Unfortunately, it's a little bit risky for me to jump out and get out and build it myself. Also, I have a gunner, so I'm not sure if he's going to steal the tank as well. So I'm just going to go straight to the one that I know is built. It's a little bit more riskier being out in the open, but as you can see, I focused the plane and I took him out just about a minute or so beforehand. So I'm quite free to sit at this ammo depot and re resupply myself. My gunner is trying to take advantage of the topography that's in front of me. So we've got this wheat field. It makes it really easy for the gunner to look down to see where the reefs are all moving or if they're running across the open ground from the building to my side. It's generally pretty useful the gunner seat in this, but unlike in Battlefield 4 and previous titles, you can get shot out. So be careful. Now I'm coming up to this position here and the reason why I want to do that is I want to get a bit of high ground so I can kind of look down onto the flag before pushing and I allow for my teammates to push up with me so they got a bit of a better positioning before they get onto the flag here so that's what I'm trying to do here I come and pick around the corner seeing what's going on in front of me I can see there's a couple of buildings being preoccupied by infantry so I'm just trying to soften them up get a couple of kills allowing for my team to get in a better position to get right up onto the flag and get on the cap and once that happens, that's when I can dive with them, knowing that I've got my left and my right covered. Because of the turrets, how they work in this game, you can't swivel your turret around really fast and just flick and kill everybody. So you just got to work and position yourself with your team. It's not like Battlefield 4 where you can kind of just solo push into a flag, pop APS, win, profit, and repeat. You're going to be a successful tanker in Battlefield 5 is taking in all the information that's around you, seeing where there are crosses of your friendly teammates are, where they're dead, where is the enemy firing, the gunshots, anything. You're going to need every single bit of information before you decide if you're going to push and dive on the flag or sit there and chill and soak up some of the damage and kill them and make it really hard for them to get anywhere or that you need to back on out because you're about to be overwhelmed. You can see here there's a whole bunch of dead crosses around me so I'm pretty much on my own here but I like to get aggressive, so I'm trying to hold my ground here and make do of what I can here. It's very difficult, especially when they own the church and they have the rooftop, because they can just ring death on you and there's not much you can do to reply back to that. So do take note of that. Don't get too carried away. Just sit on the edge of the flag, wait for your team to catch up and respawn in and push up with you. And once that happens and you've got the sufficient support, push on in. Just like I'm doing right here, I'm really, really pushing hard for this area up here because I want this high ground because once I've got the high ground, it makes it harder for the enemy to do anything about it and I can just push on into the flag and block all the spawn points. 
so you can see up here what I'm talking about there's all these infantry up on the roof here and so what I do is simply start demolishing some of the roof so that they can't really have access to it anymore so I back on up once I ran out of shells again and get my supplies back off and in that time I'm just kind of observing watching what's going on around me I'll probably be looking at my heart seeing where's the next place for me to go and we push on forward now that we've got ammo back up we're going to go push ourselves into that same position we are before we can see on the HUD that our team's really struggling to push this flag and honestly it's the only flag that I have at this point so is going to be a high probability 90% of the team's probably going to be spawning on this flag the other rest will probably be spawning in the uncapped trying to cap the give me flag which is D so at this point just do a calculation of what you think the risk will be when you push up to this flag will be. You're going to most likely run into most of the team. So, am I playing passive here? I don't think so. I'm playing actually quite smart. If the enemy is all going to be on this one spot versus me, it's simple math. It's 1 versus 32. That's a fight you're not going to win. So, there's no point for me to actually dive onto the E flag. So I back on up, you can see the enemy is actually playing smart, they're trying to push me from one angle versus another angle. Now that guys, if you're watching this and you're an infantry mame and you really hate tanks, that's the way how you do of a tank. What they're doing right now is textbook anti-tank gameplay right here. You can see two people shooting rockets at the same time so I have to shoot one or the other. I have to make choices and lucky enough I've been in plenty of high pressure scenarios like this so I'm handling this quite well. I'm trying to get off some ammo, some reps here, but they're making it really hard. Now, when you're versing really good AT players, this is how you're gonna try and clutch it. You're gonna pop off your smoke, blank it hard for them to see what's going on, shuffle your tank a little bit so that where they might be trying to predict and put a rocket into you, they're gonna miss. That's what's in the smoke nade's gonna be there for you. And when you do that, that might be the difference between life and death from getting enough ammo off, getting another supply of ammo in and getting your health back. So you can see here, I'm really making them work to get to this F flag here. I'm kind of positioning myself where I'm taking in the information around me, seeing if there's too many people pushing from too many angles and do I need to pull on back. You can see me time this right here. My tracks are disabled so I pop up a smoke and I try and get my repair off so then I have a bit more mobility because I need the mobility for me to make an escape here and you can see right here the infantry are trying really hard to get on good positions behind me so at this point it's just generally my experience dealing with good um, anti-tank pl infantry players right here that's winning me the scenario unfortunately we didn't cop the win but if you might have noticed in the kill feed and take note of the players on the other team, there's a little bit of fishy play going on to the other side. And given the region that I'm playing for this game, the Asia region is very commonly infested with hackers. So I do really feel sorry for them, especially when Battlefield 5 doesn't have great anti-cheat. Anyway guys, I hope you didn't mind this short video and enjoyed the gameplay. This is probably one of the better rounds that I've ever had on a RAS, but unfortunately, we did have some foul play going on on the other side. Anyway, hopefully Battlefield 2042 has a good anti-cheat, and that will be a thing of the past. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like, leave a comment, sub, and I'll see you next time.